<laughs> Seriously. <laughs> How are you guys doing hanging with the with the whole pandemic thing with everything? You guys staying safe? Uh, trying to. Trying to. <laughs> That's good. That's good. What about you? <laughs> Who's this uh trying to make the, you know, see the positive out of it? It sucks. Um it's kinda depressing, makes you anxious, mm -hmm. but uh yeah. you know, I'm trying to look at the positive. I mean I'm definitely spending a lot more time with my family, so Which is good. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tribunal of the Grid where we talk about all things Power Rangers, including the actors that play them. My name is Brandon. I am Lena. I'm Will. And today we have a very exciting episode for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we are being joined by a Power Ranger like no other. He has been on many others. He's been on many TV shows, but we're mainly talking about Power Rangers today. Um, now, we know him as the Surging Shark, Max Cooper. Please give it up for Philip Jean Maurice. Sir, how are you doing today? What's up? I'm hanging What's in there. Up? Happy Memorial Day to everybody out there. Hope you guys are staying safe during oh, these... Uh... That's right. I'm in Canada, so I forget that's Memorial Weekend for you guys. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Barbecuing. It's just an excuse to barbecue. That explains yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how much barbecuing people are going to be doing since we're going to be, like, stuck inside for the most part. That's true. No, uh, people are... There's going to be people doing it. There's people been doing it, at least I'm around my way, like, the last two weeks or so. Like, some people are not taking this seriously at all. So. I mean, if you have a space that's safe, that's isolated from other people, then go ahead and barbecue. If you don't, maybe order barbecue. <laughs> there you go. Public service announcement yeah. there for you guys. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, I agree 100 percent. Like if you don't, if you can't quarantine or like at least social distance, please don't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> please don't. But uh, but yes. Uh, like I said, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. You got it, Brendan. We're glad to be a part of it, man. Thank you. No problem. So let's go ahead and jump right into this because I'm pretty sure everybody wants to know. Uh -oh. Now, what was it like for you growing up as a kid in Los Angeles? <laughs> man, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a very, I mean, I wouldn't say unique experience. It was just a, uh, it was, it was a, I, I had a pretty awesome childhood not to brag but uh <laughs> just because <laughs> of the diversity that's here out here of what i was mm -hmm. kind of exposed to um all the kids on my block were of different ethnicities races so we never really looked at like i think i started like realizing race and all that stuff when i got into junior high school and then you see like oh wow this is kind of like you see the segregated people like you see the latinos you see the black people the white all in their kind of sections uh, I had a mixture of friends. I didn't really see that. Uh, I didn't see race as, as much. Um, mm. it, but uh, it was it was definitely a unique experience. I really enjoyed it. I'm, I was so thankful to to grow up in L.A. I know people hate on L.A. And they think people are fake and all that mm. stuff. <laughs> uh, most of the time, those are people that don't live in L.A. that come to L.A. And then they consider themselves an L.A. native. So I feel like those are the people that taint it and give it a bad name. But mm -hmm. people that are from L.A., we good people. <laughs> you know, actually, it's funny that you say that because I actually had that same experience mm -hmm. when I first moved out here. And it was just kind of like, ah, people are kind of weird here. <laughs> but then I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, they're not really from here. Or, yeah. So Where are you like, from? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I'm from South Carolina. Oh, cool. My my sister actually is from North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, in the sticks. She's a uh, group in Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely the sticks. I will say that. <laughs> Even the city is like. I mean that in all. Like I mean that from like not not trying to poke. I mean it's. Like, no, no, not at all. Yeah. yeah. But, no, like, no, you're, you're you're talking to somebody who's like an actual native of South Carolina. I'm willing to say it. <laughs> it <is. laughs> kind of backwards. Yeah, it's a little backwards, but it's it's great. It's funny. My sis, my sister has an accent, like at least like a little draw, and she like kind of <laughs> she was like, Philip, you think I have an accent? I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. 
<laughs> she was kind of offended because I was like, you know, you have an accent there. She's like, what? And so it's just funny. I poke fun of her. That's, that's just love her. We never grew up together. It was kind of crazy, but like, you know, we, we right now we're we're closer than ever. So yeah. Oh, wow. cool. Nice. <laughs> Now I noticed that you now, now that accent came out very well. Yeah. <laughs> so good job on that. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did, so was that like a way of you getting introduced into acting? How did that How did that happen? How did you get into acting? Yeah, I mean, um, it was kind of something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, I mean, I tell people like the when I was five, my aunt she used to walk me to the kindergarten. And there was like this bank that had kind of like this open window with like a small little stage. And at that time, I really looked up to Michael Jackson. I really wanted to be Michael Jackson. And so, you know, we would walk to school and she would pretty much be like, go ahead, go up there. And then I'd do my little Michael Jackson <laughs> want to be moonwalk and all kinds of stuff. And Aww. so I really just I just kind of enjoyed performing in that, you know, I've been, you know, since I was young and then. Uh, got into sports, of course, uh, and then in high school, like my senior year of high school, I was like, okay, I'm kind of done with sports. I was playing basketball. I played volleyball, which a lot of people don't believe. They're like, you play volleyball? <laughs> yeah, black people play volleyball too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I got out of that. I got out of sports, and I was like, I want to do, I want to like act. I want to really do it, and so. My senior year, I was in play production, theater workshop, and then after high school, I uh, got accepted to the Academy of Dramatic Arts, which was great for the first year being straight out of high school around a bunch of people who were like older than me, like 25 years, you know, just had more life experience was uh, was challenging, you know what I mean? Because, you know, yeah. you don't really connect as much um, in terms of, you know, so it was just challenging for me, but at the same time, I took that challenge and, and got invited back for the second year, which was great. Um, and nice. I wanted to just continue and keep at it, you know? My mom, like, was really kind of the driving force and really sacrificed a lot to uh, to get me to, to go to school. She she pretty much, like, her savings, she was like, here, this is, you know, here's a check. Wow. Or, you know, so, yeah, I'm truly indebted to her, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> But yeah, my mom always had my back, which is great. And she always kind of supported me no matter what. So, you know. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Like, I'm pretty sure with all the rules and everything, you're like, okay, I can finally, like, start paying you back now. It's, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not there yet. But, you know, struggling, struggling artist, you know what I mean? Can't buy my mom my house or nothing like that. You know what I mean? But, you know, I pay for a phone bill. Hey, it's something. It's something. I do the That's same, fine. and it's something. I, you know, I can just almost relate to that because I feel like our parents give us so much, and no matter what we do, we can never give back what they've given us. Yeah, right? that's right. You know? That's the so. truth. Well, that's that, that unconditional love, right? That's mm. that unconditional love that I think, like, you know, because uh, I have two kids of my own, and like I never understood what my mom. She was like, "I have unconditional love for you," and I was like, "I never." got it or understood it mm. until I had kids of my own and I was like oh wow this is what you're talking about you know you would do anything and no matter what you would love your kids no matter what and so it's uh yeah it's wild to kind of have these life experiences and, from them and, and you know yeah just trying to figure it out I don't know nothing no now, after, of course, you know, you, you're going to school and everything and you're studying to be an actor. About when did you actually start auditioning for Power Rangers? When, when did that come about? Yeah, so I, uh, I want to say I auditioned when I was 21 because um, I booked Power Rangers Wild Force when I was 23. And then the first time I actually auditioned for a life speed rescue. Uh, and when you watch oh, wow. for it, they're not, they don't tell you, they don't say, hey, this is for light speed rescue. They literally just give you a neutral script. It has, you know, it's just you and another person in the, in the scene and you're just, they just want to see your acting ability. And so I think I auditioned like maybe three, four or five times because uh, you go up to Santa Clarita where their home base was. And uh, I got close. I got really close. Um, 
it, it was uh they were like yeah you know my manager was like you're up for the, the part of the green ranger and uh, keith robinson actually got it um and i'm kind of wow. glad that he did you know because i feel like the part for max when i max cooper and like the his character i think fit me suited me better um for you know for for power rangers so uh yeah so i auditioned yeah auditioned for Lightspeed rescue then i don't think i auditioned for time force or whatever but i was glad to be on their radar and that you know that i was just lucky enough to be a power ranger it was it's one of the one of the greatest experiences of my life you know so oh, wow. super grateful <laughs> that's amazing so were you always going out for max or were you going out for any other color or any I other ranger i don't even think they tell you a color they just mm-hmm. could what it is, I think what they do is they they get the group of actors that they want, and then they kind of are like, okay, but he can go here, he can go here, she can go here, and mm. um, you know, yeah, it's it's wild, like how you know that that's what I'm saying. I'm just truly grateful to to that it all kind of fell into place, you know, because I don't think you really have that much control in terms of what part you want, where you want to go, and stuff, and you know, so it was a it was a great experience, man. It was it was truly a great experience. So, wow, Amazing. wild like wild for us. It was wild. So you know, you got the part of Max and everything, and I'm pretty sure you were really excited um, when you won the role. How was it playing the youngest member, even though Jessica Ray is actually younger, is actually the youngest cast member? <laughs> yeah, it was a. Uh, it was fun because I mean, um, I think I just didn't want to play a character. I wanted to kind of like reveal a side of myself. I remember one of my acting teachers was like, you know, you're you, you're like a you know not me specifically, but as, as an actor, you're a diamond, and then you have different facets to you, and the way the light hits whatever facet it may be, that's the that's inside of you. So as a whole. You still have, you know, maybe our values may be different, but I just tried to find something similar within myself in order to play Max, if that made any sense. And at the same time, I was only 23, too, so I was very much a kid, too. Like, you know, like looking back now, I was like, wow, I was like really young, (laughs) naive about a lot (laughs) of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, so, yeah, I just tried to try to play that character with, with sincerity, you know, um, mm-hmm. and glad that people uh, still kind of can can like relate to him and and they enjoy our season. You know, that's that's what I think. Power Ranger fans, I think, are really unique and and very loyal um, when it comes to Power Rangers, and, and for that, I'm, I'm grateful. You know, for them to kind of still remember, like the show, that show, that particular show is, you know, it's over what 20 years or is it 20 years 2003 almost almost hey, almost yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah that's crazy yeah i know getting old <laughs> <laughs> well nobody can tell right? I mean, black uh, don't crack. you look the same i was just gonna say that <laughs> you just gonna say i that. wasn't fishing for compliments by the way sorry <laughs> 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 Um, so, um, Wild Force was kind of an interesting season. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but it was, it was like right in between the Saban era and then when Disney brought it. Yeah. Um, I don't know like how, how aware you guys were of that, but if you were, were there any, any craziness going on like behind the scenes because it was in a transition period? Yeah, I mean, we were aware of it. Um, we definitely felt like the stepchild, uh, like the kind of like, you know, we we didn't really get um, as much publicity when it came to doing our shows. I remember the production office, you know, because we didn't even have something as simple as pictures. Um, <clears throat> because uh, what's great about you know the fans is that they would they would send send fan mail to you and they would ask for an autograph and of course like i don't know i'm from nobody i'm you know what i mean like i got this kid who's asking me for uh, a picture and autograph of course i want to send it to him you know but we didn't have any of that 
to the, we didn't have any any kind of pictures or whatever. But I remember the production office being nice enough to use their printer to kind of print off pictures for us so that we could send these pictures out to 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 the to the fans, which was great. So you know, it was a uh, we were kind of all in the dark in terms of uh, what was going on. Um, as you know, we didn't do like a team up because usually the season from the season before the new Power Rangers, they always do some mm-hmm. sort of team up. Uh, we didn't get to do a team up. We kind of bummed out for that, you know, because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also right, 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 right. Um, they they changed it because Disney made Power Rangers because we we were part of the union, and then um, when they moved, right, 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 right. right it was no longer a union gig anymore. So I think that kind of complicated and then we couldn't, you know, do the team up. So it's kind of oh, fun God. that we can get to do it. But but yeah, that's that's all the drama I, I'm aware of. <laughs> but that's that sucks. Like that that's yeah. really disheartening. Yeah, it's kinda of well, well you did get to do the team up with the Time Force cast. Um, how was, how was that? How was filming? How was filming that? That was great. That was really fun. That was super great. Um, they're, they're, they're just a lot of, it was just a fun couple of weeks of us filming out in LA. Uh, yeah, it it was, it was, it was pretty fun. I mean, nothing really, I mean, I think of, I think of, it's such a long time ago. Mm -hmm. As you get older, your memory starts to fade. (laughs) <laughs> and <laughs> I don't remember anything that kind of stood out. I just remember they're just a bunch of really down to earth people for the most part. And we, we had a, we had a good time. We had a good time just shooting. We shot over by the beach. Uh, just really cool. Like what was great about shooting at Power Rangers is that like, cause I'm from LA, but I didn't truly know LA until I actually was a part of the cast because we would film on location pretty much most of the time. And they would send us maps, and this is before, like, you know, you could GPS stuff. So they mm-hmm. would send you, like, maps and, like, this is how, okay, if you're coming on this way, way you go here, go here. And and uh, I got to truly see L.A., like, or just kind of see ev- everything from Ojai to to the Vasquez Rocks where they filmed the Flintstones mm-hmm. to, to and man, it was, I, I got to truly, like, see LA County and like explore it and, and really see it because you know I'm I was just a kid from, from West LA, you know, and thought I knew what LA was all about and you don't until you uh until you truly explore. So it, it gave me the opportunity to explore and see see all the, the beauty around me, which was great. So oh, wow. Nice. Wow. So uh, that's kind of, that's kinda of cool. So when you were when you were filming the show and everything um, when you were filming everything, w- as far as like the locations and everything, like would you have to? I'm pretty sure is was LA traffic as bad <laughs> as it yeah. is now, or was it? You know, you know, it wasn't so bad in the mornings because you know we would have you know seven thirty, seven o'clock calls. Like I think the girls okay. had to a little bit earlier because of hair and makeup and all that stuff, but. So we would have to, we would get to the spot, like getting there wasn't that difficult, but when we're finished, you know, shooting, sometimes we'll finish in the afternoon and it's like, I'm stuck in traffic. I'm trying not to fall asleep at the wheel, blasting myself in the face, rolling the windows down, blasting the music, um, <laughs> you know, all kinds of stuff. But uh, yeah, traffic was definitely, definitely bad. That, that, that part I didn't miss as far as... <laughs> Uh, being in traffic but uh but it was great because you know you got to kind of see see different parts of LA that you never could have seen before you know or never explored so it it was great yeah because I I I definitely wanted to know that because I'm just like okay y'all were filming y'all were filming mainly in in LA so it's just like I know traffic was probably probably nice it was insane still is you know? Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. By all means, try to avoid the 405, no matter what. You know, that's hello freeway <laughs> that everyone tries to avoid. I try to avoid that. Like, yeah, because in in the middle of the day, you'll be stuck there for an hour at least. You know what I mean? No matter where you're going, to the valley or to the west side. So it's tough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what was one thing that you liked about Max, and what was one thing that you didn't like? Hmm. Good question. Um, I don't know. At the time, I tried. I, I truly just tried to embrace like everything, the good and the bad, because I feel like if I looked at it from that perspective and was like, "Oh, I don't like this about my character," I wouldn't play him with sincerity i just would kind of be judging him so mm -hmm. i think i i just wanted to um you know the the whole like not getting respect that that would i guess that was a negative thing something like that and kind of he he had a chip on his shoulder he had a chip on his shoulder he always kind of wanted to or felt the need to always prove himself i mean i feel like the older Max, like the wise Max, would look if if you get to go into a time machine and go back and be like, "Yo, chill out, be easy, be my friend. Like you, you're good, like you're good, you're okay, you're you're fine. You should just right. relax. You don't need to prove yourself so much. You can just be you, you know." And so, I feel like maybe that that could be maybe something. That, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I I I just enjoyed it, man. It was a it was a great experience, bro. It was it truly was, man. It bonded us. Um, it's some really great connections. Um, you know, Jack and Jess still love them to this day. They, they're, they're, they're great. And, uh, you know, it was just a unique experience, man. I'm truly grateful to kind of be a part of the Power Ranger family, you know, because, uh, you know, even though they have one every year or whatever, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it truly is, uh, it was a great experience, man. So I, I, I definitely don't take it for granted for sure. <laughs> absolutely absolutely and uh, you did mention jack uh, which is going to actually be my next question um what was your thoughts on your relationship with their friendship with max and with max and danny yeah it was great because you know what i mean i'm i'm not the biggest dude in life in real life and i remember always having like i remember i was 13 years old and one of my homies who lived down the street from me he was 6'2", 250 pounds, a 13-year-old boy. But he was like wow. a new child, you know? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember, the, yeah, and that was, that's my homie. Like, like we would ride, we would ride together and like, you know, uh, yeah, he was kind of like my protector. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'd be like the, like, if we were dogs, I'd be like the loud chihuahua and be like the German <laughs> shepherd, you know, or the mascot, like, just protecting me. And so, uh, you know, that that was easy. That type of relationship was kind of easy to have um, with Jack, especially. Um, and uh, yeah, we just, he, he was fun to, to kind of, work with. we would always just, sometimes just give it a go and improvise and stuff that was not written in the script. We would just kind of go at it. And because of our relationship off camera too, I feel like that wasn't fake, like that chemistry that we had between us, you know what I mean? So it was very, it was very fun to play and easy to play, which was, which was cool. So I dug it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, because, like, I noticed, like, especially a lot of, like, the band fair and stuff that, that you guys would do, it, it would be, um, 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 I was, like, I always kind of wondered, like, how much of this is actually improvised and how much of this is actually, like, direction? Like, okay, go do this or, you know, something like that or, you know. Yeah, you know, the thing about the directing, like, as far as they, the directors wouldn't really tell you, like, okay, I need you to blah, 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 or, you know, I need you to do this or give, like, acting notes. They were more technical directors. They were technical directors. They're like, this is the shot. We're going to set this up. Like, so, and at that time, we only had one camera. So, like, you know, we're, we're going to move the camera around. And and so, in terms of the acting, you, it was just left up to you. They just trusted you to kind of bring it. And so, it was fun to mm. kind of play because we would just play and just have fun. And I feel like when you're doing that and staying loose with it, that's when you can kind of create memorable moments and, and um, genuine moments, you know? Uh, so it made it, it made it fun to just kind of just go out and play. Uh, and they, they nice. kind of allowed us to do it, which is great. So. <laughs> nice. Now you, you did kind of touch on this a little bit, but I do want to know if Max was, you know, real, was a real person, where would he be in 2020? Man, I think he would definitely probably settle down, have a family, 
Uh, I think he would uh, become a professional bowler for sure. That was kind of like his path. He was he was headed towards that path, but then <clears throat> he was asked to become a Power Ranger. But I think he would go back to bowling, and he would kill me. Mm. I think he would he would kill. It'd be like the Tiger Woods of bowling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. All right. Well, this is now coming to the part of the interview where we mainly what we call the Ranger name game. Okay. I am just going to mention an actor's name. And you're just going to give, you know, whatever memory comes to mind, you know, whether embarrassing, whatever. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> just the first thing that pops into your head when I mention the actor. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to be nervous, nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> now, we already talked about this person, um, but I'm going to mention their name anyway. Jack Guzman. Down to earth, loyal, homie, easy to get along with. <laughs> am I supposed to just say like words? What am I supposed to say? I know it's in like a name. Whatever, whatever, whatever comes, whatever to, comes mind. to mind. Words, memories, okay. Okay. whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, a grinder, uh, just out there doing it, um, inspiring. You know, for me, because I see him like on all these TV shows, man, I'm like, bro, I'm trying to get to where you're at, bro, like, for sure. And so I, I take that and I'm inspired by it. So, yeah, wow. sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's definitely very, very modest. He's very modest. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, me and uh, me and Lena met him at Power Morphicon, was talking to him at Power Morphicon um, last year two years ago yeah and he, he was just like oh i'm not really doing anything meanwhile he has all these things <laughs> all these roles that he's been doing we're just right? like sir what do you mean <laughs> right yeah. like, like, what are you talking about nothing's happening it's like okay <laughs> For sure he's a hard worker he's a hard worker <laughs> next person jessica ray Jessica Ray, mother, um, good natured, always kind of looks out for you, takes care of you, uh, sweet, um, yeah, very similar to Alyssa. <laughs> you know what I mean? A great or very organized, extremely organized. I will say that she is extremely organized. Um, yeah, good hearted person. <laughs> Actually, that was the next person, <laughs> Allison Kipperman. Allison, um, she's a bit of a, a what is it? Huh? Hey now. <laughs> and next person, Philip Andrew. Ah, uh, Drew, Drew, just a, a good-hearted guy. Uh, always means well. Um, every time we do cons, we always have a good time. He's always, he's like the the fun guy of the group. Uh, um, yeah, just a good hearted dude. He's a, he's a good hearted dude, like a, a great dude. I'm really like missed that dude. I, I wish he was back out in LA, but, uh, he's out in, uh, Texas and, uh, you know, doing his thing. So yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I did not know that. I didn't know he was in Texas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He lives in Texas now. So he's been out there for quite a while. Oh, wow. Um, Ricardo Medina. Good dude, man. He's just a man. Him and Jack, like the three of us, truly did bond. Like when we were on the show, we truly did. Like, you know, you spend a lot of time with people on set, uh, 12 hour days sometimes. And then after working on set, I'd be like, yo, come back to, come back to, you know, at that time I was living with my mama. But I always be like, yo, come, come and hang out. Come and hang out with me. Not hang out with my mama, but, like, come and hang out with me. Like, you know, we're like so close to my house. Like, let's go. Let's go hang out, you know? And and we all did, man. We we would hang out and kick it. And uh, I got nothing but love for that dude, man. I, I remember um, him being at my place. I, I called him and Jack, and I was like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook up some carne asada. And we're just going to kick it, man, like old days, dude, because it's been way too long. 
and uh, they both came through, and that was that was a very memorable time, man, of just us hanging back and, and kicking it and, you know, just, yeah, just hanging out, man, hanging out, you know. I feel I feel like, yeah, uh, I definitely miss, miss those times. And so, you know, I wish him nothing but the best. And so, you know, with the situation he's going through, I, I wish him nothing but the best and all the love, all the power to him, and I hope uh, hope he comes out. Um, rehabilitated and, and good from it, and and I know in his heart that he's a he's a, he's a good dude. He's a great dude. So, mm. yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. He's a good dude. Um. Do you, do your kids know about your past as a Power Ranger? They do, and they don't care. Oh, <laughs> oh no! They, they humble me. They keep me grounded. <laughs> All right. And I even, you know, what's so funny is that, like, here, this is, this is, oh. I gave this to my son, and so this he used to have like a voice, like you know, my voice in it or whatever. But as you can see. The suit's looking a little ratchet, like you know, <laughs> everything kind of. You know, he played with he played with this for like maybe about a week or so, and then like you know, <laughs> to the side, <laughs> like an average but, kid, <laughs> huh? Like an average kid. <laughs> there you go, exactly, exactly. But uh, yeah, they they humble me. They you know, I don't I don't need to be like you know I used to be a power ranger. Mm-hmm. Then, oh, Daddy, oh, Chris, you're like you still dad. <laughs> that in my eyes. So <laughs> that's cute, though. Yeah. So you can't. Wow. Tell me what to do? What's up? They're probably like, you can't tell me what you just because you're a Power Ranger. <laughs> I tried to threaten him. I'll be like, don't let me morph on you, boy. Don't make me morph. I'll morph on you right wow. now. Get get out of here. <laughs> Wow! Such dad jokes. jokes. Straight up, straight up. I'm just corny dad to him. How old are the kids? Uh, My son is gonna be nine, so he's eight now, and then my daughter's four, gonna be five. Oh, so really young. Yeah, it's a blessing. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, like, I'm pretty sure. Well, obviously, your kids are just like you're just dad. But to us, you know, you're ranger. You're not dead to us. <laughs> I'll be a power daddy. <laughs> That's funny. What was your introduction or um, back in, or your way back into the fandom as far as like cons and stuff? How did that happen? So a friend of mine um, who I grew up with, uh, my homie Kiyoshi, uh, he's black and Japanese, and that's that's my homie. Like he, like we are. My aunt and his mom were really good friends, and uh, my aunt from Hawaii came to visit me, and uh, you know that's how I reconnected with Kiyoshi. And he was like, "Bro, he's like, he's like, you're not doing any conventions or anything." And I was like, "What are those?" <laughs> so he was like, "Yo, you should be doing cons and stuff." And I was like, "What? What are what? What are you talking about?" And so um, I want to say that was like maybe in wow, 2009, 2010, mm. around that time. Like he was like, "Yeah, man, you should be, you should definitely be out there doing doing cons and stuff." And, and uh, yeah, I've had my parachute room, which has been great been able to travel to certain places um like i said man the the power ranger fans are are very loyal unique and they they got love for you man and so um you know to to be kind of acknowledged for, for something that i did almost 20 years ago uh, right is a great feeling is a great feeling so um you know uh, i couldn't be doing those without them so i appreciate y'all but Kind of bummed that we didn't get to do more for Khan this year, of course, with everything that's going on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we there. were supposed to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys were there in Anaheim, right? Two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. They were. I wasn't at that one. Oh, are, wait. So are you from uh, L.A. too? Are you in L.A. too, Will? No, I'm in Philly. Oh, you're in Philly. Oh, man. So that's yeah, that's, a, that's quite a ways for you. <laughs> do you do the other ones, like, on the East Coast? Yeah. Yeah. When I can... 
That's I can. Cool. You ever been a ranger stop in Florida? I have been. We were talking about trying that. I think what was it last year or what? Last year, I think. Or twenty eighteen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We were, but it just didn't. It just didn't make any sense uh, for timing wise, money wise, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Those. That was like one of my. I had a lot of fun doing ranger stop just because it's really just about the fans and like them kind of hanging out with other other fans and of course power rangers and stuff and and they truly make that event like all about the fans and and uh it's all it's rangers non-stop the whole weekend and i, I had a great time just kind of connecting with certain people who, who knew of me and and making friendships and yeah it was just a big old party it was great <laughs> It was great. And oh, looked it definitely looked fun from from all the pictures. Yeah. Oh yeah. For real. I mean, yeah, they we got need all to go when all of this is over. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so Lena, you're from you're in Canada, right? Yeah, Which I'm part? In, like I'm in Toronto. Inside? Huh? In Toronto. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it's like you know you're where you know like that really famous Drake album with the CN Tower? Yeah. Like right yeah. in the core of it. You live in that building? No, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> like, like okay, I, live, Lena. I live close enough that I can see it out my window. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's like, awesome. Friend, like, I still have yet to go to Toronto. I want to go to Toronto. Like, heard there's nothing but love in Toronto. Man. It's, like, the, the, yeah. I have, I, like, it's kind of like what you mentioned earlier with living in LA and it being so diverse and being so open. Like, that's kind of like how I feel too. Like, we are very diverse mixtures of everybody and it was just ridiculously friendly all the time awesome. yes we say That's sorry awesome. a lot i know i do <laughs> i'm guilty of it like overly <laughs> why is that a bad thing that shouldn't even be a bad thing you yeah. know what i mean i uh, i feel like true. people in la like it's it's diverse but it's completely you don't get sorry you get moved. You out do of not. Way. You get moved out of my way. Yeah. Right. You, know, you get looks. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I learned that the hard way. Like, like, um, wow. um. So I think, I think, yeah, people in Toronto would put LA people to shame. Yeah, sure. no, I learned that the hard way. When I was hanging with Brandon in LA, I would bump it to people, or they would bump it to him, like, I'm sorry. They're just kind of like, move. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Yes. All right. Where would you want me Period. to go? <laughs> your left, my left. Uh, you're good. You're good. Oh my you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. want to experience that. I want to. I want to go out to Toronto. No, definitely, that. definitely come. We have so much to do once all of this is over, of course. So much to see. Like it's amazing. It's you know how they say like, I know like um it's, it's supposed to be like New York. It is a city that never sleeps. They lie, but you can always find places that are open twenty four hours. Nice, nice. Oh, wow. I'm a foodie too, because I love food. So like, yes! I, I would just, oh, I would, we, come. we would get along so well if you come. Oh. <laughs> you got to take me to the spots. Absolutely, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just have a couple of more, a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, right, I, I, I got this one. Um, so, if it's possible, could you please? Give me a short summary of your character, Vincent, from Passions. Oh, yeah. Because I still am, like, so confused <laughs> at what the hell was going on there. I think, <laughs> too, bro. I, think I was very confused of what was going on, too, man. So. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> when I initially auditioned for that part, um, it was for the role of Peeping Tom. It wasn't like I was auditioning for Vincent. Like, I was like, oh. Oh, okay, I'm just going to this audition. I'm playing a peeping Tom. Let me just go in here and try to do my best <laughs> as being like a voyeur of some way. And then as I kept reading the sides, I was like, oh, <laughs> this person is raping someone. What the oh. hell? Oh, very uncomfortable, first of all, wow. being a black man doing something like that. And. Mm. Uh, they were like, okay, well, you're going to have, like, a ski mask on. So, like, your race, you won't get, like, you won't be revealed as far as who you are. Because I, I personally felt like, well, this is, I'm not trying to perpetuate anything or any kind of stereotype. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just very awkward and weird. And I remember doing those scenes with uh, Emily. And then we would be doing them. And she's li literally crying, giving it, like, I 
felt bad, bro. And they'd be like, mm. cut. I'd like jump right off of her and I'd be like, yo, this is crazy. This is weird. Uh, but I'm an actor. So I want to like, you know, act. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then right. so going from there to something that was only supposed to be like maybe four days, I ended up working on the show for a year and a half, which oh, has wow. been great. It was great. Yeah. Because then it, it, it's, it went into it went deeper and my character was this half man half woman um character where i wore a mask and i, I remember that and i was i was the blackmailer technically i was a blackmailer and then came to reveal i was actually vincent crane kind of the love child of julian crane and eve crane and eve uh I forgot. excuse me i forgot her last name uh, of the character uh, Eve, even Julian had a baby, a love child, which was me. And Alistair Crane actually raised me, but he didn't. Oh, raise so me. that makes sense now. Yeah. Okay, so he didn't raise me like he didn't raise me, you know, like a grandfather would raise a regular grandchild. He <laughs> taught much, you to be a monster. I'm assuming he pretty much abused the crap out of me. He okay, abused me and. Um, you know, uh, as revenge, I wanted to get back on everyone in, in harmony, especially the cranes, because I felt like I was entitled to that. I was a part of the family, but I was quote unquote, the black sheep, you know, of the family and treated Mm -hmm. like crap. And so, uh, that's the reason why I pretty much was seeking vengeance all throughout harmony. And you know, it was wild, man, but I will tell you this, it definitely is, and from an actor's perspective, it is more fun to play the bad guy. <laughs> it just is. Before, it just yeah. is. It was fun. So um that was a great, great experience. It was crazy and wild. Um you just <laughs> take it take it week by week. Right. And uh they never really sat you down and was like, Hey, this is what's gonna go on with your character. They're just like you're doing this this week. And I'm like, well, I'm giving birth on my mom's kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was on, I think I was on talk soup a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And like that to me was like, I was like, mama, I made it. Look at me. I'm on talk right. soup, mama. <laughs> they got me. Joe McHale is clowning me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. It was wild. It was wild. It was definitely wild. But I'm impressed yeah. that you yeah. remember all of that. Yeah, it's hard to forget. <laughs> <laughs> I would think so. Jeez. Oh my god. I mean, seriously. <laughs> oh my god. Now I actually have one question for you. Yeah. Um now what was it like working on Silicon Valley? Oh, that was great, man. That was great because uh, you, you talk about improvisers and like the the series regulars on there, all of them from top to bottom, they literally like were masters of their craft, man. And they would be so loose with it. They wouldn't just be like, I'm going to say my lines and this is it and we're end of the scene. They, like, would stay their lines, do it, and then be like, okay, we got that. Okay, now I'm going to just have fun and play. And their ability to kind of just let go and do it when you're just sitting there, was like it felt like I was watching a master class because of improv- improvisation. I was just like, man, these guys are sitting there, and they're not trying to be funny. They're literally just so quick-witted, smart, just on top of it in the moment like you can't ask for nothing but that like and so i was in awe like i was scared to even do anything you know what i mean i was just like i was just like man i don't want to step on anybody's toes i just want to sit here and and watch i can't believe i'm getting paid to like be in this master class <laughs> you know that's I mean? crazy uh, yeah those guys are truly truly gifted man they're they're great so it was it was a fun experience it was a great experience <laughs> yeah, because like I would be watching it and I'm like, gee, like this really doesn't feel there's no way this could be scripted. Like there's right. no way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Some of those some of the best moments I think come from those, you know, those those kind of improvised moments. And so they they just are truly they just are masters of their craft and when it comes to that, man, from all all of them, all of them so great. I was just like, man, man. 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. That was a fun experience. This will bring us down to lightning round. What is your current favorite okay. TV series or movies that you are currently watching because of quarantine or self-isolation? Okay. So the reason one that me and my wife just watched were the, uh, the boys. Uh, oh, that was awesome. Yeah, that was so good. I can't wait for season two. Man, me man. You and me both. It's just, oh, man. Just such a great. Oh, yeah. It's a great TV show. Just seeing, like, the underbelly of, like, you know, and because mm-hmm. essentially it's just people who are in power that are corrupt, you know? Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. it's just, it's so interesting, so funny, um, so good to watch. So, yeah, my wife and I binged, we binged that like crazy. Um, mm-hmm. That was, like, the, the most recent one because we literally finished it two days ago. Wow. <laughs> All the season. Really can't, wait, can't, wait for the, can't wait for the new one. Um, the next season. Yeah. It's a little disgusting, but... Ugh. It's definitely, yeah, it's gory. It's gory <laughs> out there, you know what I mean? Like, even the first episode where he's, like, hanging out with this girl and then, like, he's holding yes. his hands and yeah. he has blood all over like, the like, like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, it's a dream. He's gonna wake up. Yo, mom... Yeah. My mouth dropped when I saw that. I, I couldn't believe it. Seriously. That. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, what in, in this real world, what would happen if we had superheroes? You know, because there's bound to be mistakes, collateral damage, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. getting killed, you know, like even when they're in that group, like, you know, mm. uh, this one lady's talking, she's like, yeah, I just wish, you know, I'm so glad that, I, you know, he saved my life. I just wish he was a little bit more gentle because he left her paralyzed. You know, uh, we're yeah. like, damn, yeah, bro, that's like right. that. In a real world, that stuff could happen if we had superheroes in our world. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, yeah, um, it's it's. I, I love it. It's a it's a good show. I know. <laughs> I agree. I certainly agree. We love it. We. I yeah. I heard they were actually, well. They're actually shooting in Toronto for that, and I was talking to a crew member, and they said they just finished wrapping up season two. So hopefully. That can yeah. be done while they're in quarantine and have that out for it next year. Hopefully. I'm ready to bid. Right. So ready. <laughs> Give it to I'm me. So ready. <laughs> um, was there any other would you like to add to the list or that was your most you're like, I'm sticking with this, nothing's better. I mean, that was great. I mean, um something else. I mean, Ozark. I watch Ozark. Yes. I love all three seasons. Uh, Ozark is legit. Um, if anybody hasn't watched it, that's that's a really good TV show. Uh, a little, very dark. Very, very dark. Yeah. Um, trying to think of other stuff. Of course, I can't think of anything right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'm just, I just thought of the, the stuff that I just recently watched. But um, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's good. I watched yeah. documentaries, too. Like, I know that, Billy. I watch documentaries. No, it's not wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. As for the TV shows, TV shows, The Boys is like, yeah legit so good that, no, that's really good show um are you a coffee or tea person coffee for sure yes. love coffee team coffee. Yes. coffee don't talk to me unless i have my coffee uh i go to i i usually get like espresso from starbucks but i don't buy it at starbucks i buy it at the market because it's cheaper oh. uh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> And then I just kind of dump it in there, and I just, yeah, I the way I take my coffee is literally, yeah, espresso with half and half, no sugar, nothing like that, just straight up, just give me the, the fat from the half and half, and I'm good, I'm good. I like it a little bitter, a little strong, you no, know, because it good. just it just gives you a smack in the face, and you're like, okay, let's go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that could do it. <laughs> um, are you a DC or a Marvel person? I would have to say Marvel just because that whole world, the way they have kind of developed it and um, they just did such a smart job of, of really sucking you in. And, and even as a kid, I remember recording X-Men, the cartoon show, because it would come on Saturday mornings and I would always record X-Men. Yes. Um, I was just a big fan of, of that whole world of Marvel for sure, definitely. Amazing. Um, if you could yes. have one superpower, what would you want it to be? Ooh, uh, man. Okay, this is good stuff. Uh, I guess maybe 
being able to read people's minds. Um, but if I had control of it and I was able to like turn it off and on, I don't want to like oh, the thoughts this... are like you know thoughts are continually like going yeah. in the and like it it would drive me crazy if like yeah. if I was able to just kind of like look at someone and then just like read their their mind. Like I don't want that. Like I want to have some kind of keep some kind of mystery and be like let me get to know this person mm. rather than like, yeah. rather than like you know, read some so i think yeah reading because i think you could use that to your advantage of course uh mm. to help you but that that would be cool that, that would, be, would cool. be a cool surprise the mesmer the mesmer and uh the boys right right and that was so funny to me that scene where like they're at a, a convention, you know what I mean? And these are kind right. of like, I was like, bro, low key, like, I was like, damn, like, hella I was like, oh shit, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that was me. You know? But it's, it's so funny, just that parallel. It's it's so funny. It's such a good show. No, anyway. it really is. <laughs> um, the last question from me is what would you want your legacy to be? Wow. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I would just, I would want to be remembered as a person who has an open heart, uh, loves people for who they are rather than what they are. Mm. Um, and I try to teach my kids that and be an example of just always learning, always wanting, <clears throat> having, having a thirst for, for wanting to you know, because I feel like once you feel like you've got it figured out, the world kind of flips itself on its mm. head and then turns yourself upside down. So mm. it skews your perspective. And so I feel like we don't have it all figured out. And if we continue just having an open mind, an open heart, mm. then we can we can we can grow from it. And we can be better people, and we could you know teach others to to be you know examples of that. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah. the last question out of all of this is where can the people yeah. find you? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm usually not on Facebook anymore, but I am on Instagram. Um, I don't post as much as I should be, um, unfortunately. Uh, but you can find me at Philip Jean Marie on Instagram. There is one that's called official Philip Jean Marie. That is not official because it is not me. So, just, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not me. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but you can find me at Philip Jean Marie on Instagram, and that's that's where you can find me. Yeah. That's good to clarify because we saw two also. <laughs> yeah, there are two. Yeah, I think we started one, but then it just kind of yeah. I I don't have control of that one at all, so hmm. it ain't really mine. But okay. at Philip Jean Marie, you can find me. Perfect. Well, thank you. All right. Thank well, you, thank, thank you for you. joining thank us you. today. Got it, man. Happy, happy Sunday. I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe. Wash your hands. Always yes. wear yes. a mask. Okay. Yeah. Don't be courageous and try to think, oh, this ain't gonna get me. But like, you know, we yeah. Oh, no. Wash your hands. Right. Uh, we will get through this, guys. I, I, I hope that we, we will, and I, I pray that we will. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think if anything, this whole situation has kind of caused us to be a little bit more compassionate towards one another. Mm. And, uh, mm. you know, maybe that's something that we could take away from this and, and loving your fellow man and not seeing them for, you know, what they are, but rather who they are inside of, inside of, the, inside of their heart, who they are as a person, and just accepting people for who they are rather than just you know judging others so i feel like uh mm -hmm. we can maybe take something from this from this from this situation that we're in you know absolutely well thank yeah. you so much for right. taking the time Thanks. to be here with us you know we really thank appreciate you for it. your time today oh man you got it not a problem you got it man thank you for having me i appreciate it appreciate you no problem yep yep, yep. <laughs> well this is <laughs> well this has been another episode of tribunal of the grid and my name is brandon i am lena i'm will and I'm Phil. <laughs> it rhymes. It does. <laughs> and we will see y'all next time. Bye. 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 Bye.